Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at speed and velocity. Similarly to last time where we looked at distance and displacement, distance was a scalar, displacement was a vector, speed in this case is a scalar and velocity is a vector. Speed refers to how fast an object is traveling without any consideration to the direction of its motion, therefore being a scalar value. It's calculated by using the distance an object moves in a specific amount of time. The units normally used in physics are meters per second. Uniform speed refers to when speed does not change. It stays the same during the entire time interval. It is calculated using this formula right over here. Uh, so the speed, the uniform speed, is equal to whatever distance was traveled over a specific amount of time. Non-uniform speed is when the speed of an object changes during that time. So the first example could be you were cruising on the highway at a specific set speed, you have your cruise control activated. The next one here, maybe you are at a stoplight and you are now increasing your velocity or your speed as time goes along. When this occurs, we can calculate the average speed and the formula used to calculate the average speed is the same as the uniform speed. The speed is just labeled as being average. So as you can see in both cases here, we have distance over the change in time. Um, but in this case here, we're going to have a specific uh, average velocity, which means that, that you're just taking the entire amount because imagine that you traveled for 10 seconds and you were at, uh, at a stop and you traveled to 100 kilometers an hour and then maintain that, uh, that speed. Um, you're clearly not traveling 100 kilometers an hour the entire time. So to calculate that uh, speed is just how much distance did you travel within that 10 seconds and then it's just that distance over the time. And you would clearly get something less than the 100 kilometers an hour. For velocity, velocity on the other hand is a vector. It's how fast an object is moving in a specific direction, uh, which again makes it a vector, is this directional movement. It is calculated by using displacement. Also uh, a di difference right over there too, right? So the first one is, if we go back over here, speed is used by calculating distance an object moves in a specific amount of time. So had you traveled in one direction and then you came back to your starting point, um, however far you went away, uh, you would double that because when you get back, you would have uh, gone the same amount on the way back. So with distance, say you went 10 kilometers north and then 10 kilometers south, you'd have traveled a total of 20 kilometers in distance. Well, if you look at your displacement, your displacement in that same example, if you went uh, 10 one way, 10 the other, that, that's gonna be zero. You're back to the initial starting point. And so displacement is when, uh, what you're gonna be using for velocity, uh, distance for speed. Um, same as speed, your units are gonna be meters per second, so that's what we're gonna wanna use most of the time. Uh, let's stay consistent with that. Uniform velocity, similar to uniform speed, is where the velocity does not change. Just like in uniform speed, it was when speed did not change. It stays the same during the whole time interval and it's calculated using that formula. So very similar formula to the one above. Uh, the one thing you might notice is that there is the change in. So the change in displacement. So remember it's that final displacement minus your initial displacement. And so it's different than distance because you could end up traveling a hundred kilometers and still have a displacement of zero just because you went 50 in one direction and then you came 50 back in the opposite direction. So remember it's displacement, change in displacement over time. As for non-uniform velocity, same idea here. When the velocity of an object changes during the time interval, so now maybe you're going accelerating to hundred kilometers an hour north. When this occurs, we calculate the average velocity and the formula used is exactly the same as the uniform one. But again, you're, you're labeling this as your average velocity. In the previous one, that was your velocity as long as it was the uniform velocity. Here, if you're changing your velocity, maybe you were even at 100 and now you're trying to stop uh, as you move towards the, the east. Well, you're going to have an average velocity in that time interval. So it won't be 100, it won't be zero, it'll be somewhere in between depending how quickly you decelerate it.
When calculating velocity or even average velocity, be sure to always indicate what direction object is moving. The velocity of an object is always the same direction as the displacement. So if you were to calculate what the displacement is, you would need the magnitude as well as the direction and the angle if there was one. That direction and angle is going to be the same for your velocity. So when performing calculations of velocity, be sure to always label a positive and negative direction. So the same idea as with uh, displacement. For our first example, we have during a three second time interval, a runner's position changes from 50.0 meters away from the finish line of a race to only 30.5 meters away from the finish line. What is the runner's average velocity? What is the runner's average velocity? So three second time interval, a runner's position changes from 50 meters away from the finish line to uh, only 30. 0.5 meters away from uh, the finish line. What is the average velocity? So it partly depends on how, you, how you're drawing this out. So if we were to draw this out here, um, have a re reference point right over here, this is going to be the finish line. And we'll extend this over here. So this is 50 meters away. So our runner's position changed from 50 meters. So again, I'm trying to kind of keep, keep it consistent where positive values are to the right here. So if it was at 50 meters, that was the initial position. And then a little while later, it was at 30.5. This is visually what's happening. So the runner is moving in this direction, right? Like so. So if we were to also label these as well, we would have our initial uh, I guess change in displacement here in reference to the uh, the reference point right over here. And then our final value, our final change in uh, displacement is going to be right over here. So we're only measuring it from when it started at 50 to when it ended at 30.5. And so when we do our calculation, we will look like this. We're going to be looking for our uh, velocity right over here. And uh, it is asking for your average velocity. So we'll just indicate it as such. It's going to be the change in displacement over change in time. And change in displacement, remember, is your final value minus your initial value. And normally, I just end up writing time over here. So even though it is change in time, uh, I often just write t for shorthand. Uh, our final value was 30.5. Our initial value was 50. And this took place over three seconds. So uh, if you already notice when you're going to subtract this, you are going to get a negative value. And that should also make sense because your velocity is moving in the left direction here. So it's going to be a negative value. Our average velocity is going to be negative 6.50 meters per second. It said nothing about what direction anything was for this race. So we can just leave it uh, as such, negative 6.5, uh, 0 meters per second. So indicating it's kind of the going in the left direction according to our drawing right over here. So yeah, big, big thing here, just bear in mind, it's the final minus uh, the initial. Oh, and this should be not a B, this should be a D. Sorry about that. So final displacement minus the initial displacement over the change in time, uh, which was a three second time interval. For the second example here, we have a car that's traveling east at 25 meters per second, and it begins one kilometer east of Niverville. How far away from Niverville is the car 30 seconds later? So it's already traveling a specific velocity. It already begins one kilometer east. So the first thing we need to do too is recognize that this is in kilometers, and we want to be able to change that to meters. So just to say this is a thousand meters right off the bat so that our units are going to be the same. We have a thousand meters here. We have 25 meters per second. So both are in meters now. How far away from Niverville is the car 30 seconds later? So it was east of Niverville and it's going to be even further away afterwards. So if you have, have some starting point right over here uh, or the reference point and now you have a thousand meters 
this is where the, the starting point is. So you have a reference point right over here. Uh, it starts right over here. And now it's traveling a uh, set distance. What is that distance? Well, it's going to be 25 times 30 because for every second, it's going 25 meters. It's going 25 meters per second. So each second this car travels is going 25 meters and it's traveling that for 30 seconds. So we can draw, this is going to be, I think that's what, 750. So I'm already just, just going to label that like so. Um, it might only be this, this long then to make it shorter than this one right over here. And so this is our, our final value right over there. And yeah, I, I kind of already did that in my head because I just thought about it 25 meters per second for 30 seconds. So we just multiply those two values. But let's also go ahead and, uh, and show kind of what that looks like. How do, how do we actually get that value? And so you can start with this formula right over here where you have your average velocity equaling your change in displacement over time and, or change in time. And we're looking to solve for displacement. So I did this in my head, but just to show you how that looks, uh, we want to isolate this variable here. So we're going to multiply both sides by T. Um, and then we're going to go like this then. Our average velocity times our change in time is equal to our change in displacement. So our average velocity is 25. Uh, the change in time is 30 seconds. So we can have exactly that, 25 times 30 equaling uh, 750. But uh, that doesn't finish the answer right there. That just has calculated from our initial starting point to the final point. It says how far away from Niverville is the car. So this over here is Niverville. This is the reference point. And uh, we just have to add those two values right up over there. So the total value, you clearly can do that in your head, but we'll just quickly show that. And make sure that you have your proper units, meters. And it's just asking for how far away it is. It's not asking for a specific displacement. So we don't need to actually like re re reference the point that it's uh, 1,750 meters east of, of Niverville. So it's only asking for how far away it is, so AKA the distance. If it was asking for displacement, you would also need to include uh, east. All right, and this last value right over here, let's look at this last example. A person decides to go outside for a jog. They run 1.5 kilometers south uh, of their home in 15 minutes and I'm already noticing something I'm seeing minutes over here I'm seeing kilometers over there but let's continue and then turn around and run 1.2 kilometers north in 12 minutes and stop to take a break a break what is the average speed of this person what is the average velocity of this person making sure to use meters per second so let's do a variety of things here. Um, for these ones here, we can convert those right, right away. The 1500 kilometer, oh, 1500, I'm already giving the answer here. 1500 uh, meters is the same as 1.5 kilometers. Here we have 1200 meters. And let's write these ones on the side over here. Maybe I should have done that with the other ones as well. 15 minutes. Um, we're just going to multiply that by uh, by 60 because we're going to say, well, we want to get rid of minutes and get to seconds. We're going to say, well, one minute is the same thing as 60 seconds. And so the minutes will cancel out. And it's just going to be uh, 15 times 60, which is 900 seconds. And for the second one, 12 minutes, same idea. 60 seconds over one minute. The minutes cancel. And in this case, we're left with 720 seconds. So now that we've converted uh, the time interval, so for 900 seconds, they ran, uh, or that's how long it took. It took 900 seconds to run 1.5 kilometers south, and it took 720 seconds to run 1,200 meters uh, north after afterwards. Um, and stop to take a break. So uh, let's start with speed first.
because speed is uh, again, again going to be easier to do than uh, velocity. So if we were to calculate speed, it's going to be our distance over the change in time. And our total distance is just going to be these two values added together. So the 1500 plus the 1200, all divided by the total amount of change in time. So from the beginning to the end. So the 900 plus the 720. And when you punch this in on a calculator, if you wanted to make sure that the top would be in brackets like so, and the bottom would be in brackets as so as well. Or you could just calculate in your head that you have 2700 over 1620, and then you would only be punching in 2700 over 1620. And uh, what you end up getting is a value of 1.67 meters per second. So our final speed equals 1.7 meters per second. Now for our velocity. When calculating the velocity, there's a variety of things. As you notice, it's already filled out over here. And that's just because uh, there was one particular area in which I, I just kind of strayed from the, the proper way to explain that. So we're just going to go through that right now. Um, there's two ways to go about doing this and we'll show you the way that we did it in the previous example above where when you're taking the change in displacement which is your final value minus your initial value if we look at this over here we have an initial 1500 meters south followed by 1200 meters north and so when you have your change in displacement or when you add these two vectors up you're going to have this dotted line over here being your change in displacement, which if you have 1500 south, we would represent that as negative 1500 and 1200 north, we would represent it as positive 1200. If you added these two together, you would get negative 300 meters. And so your total uh, displacement, when you add your two vectors up, your two, uh, two changes in displacement, you're gonna get negative 300. Now, if we use the values based on what we drew over here, so our initial starting point was at zero, our final value, our final displacement was 300 meters south or negative 300 meters. Then when you plug this in over here, you're gonna have negative 300 for your final value minus zero over that 1620, which was shared with the speed. So the same amount of time that took place for speed was for velocity as well. And so now you just take these, divide them you're going to get negative 0 0.185, which rounded to two significant figures is uh, negative decimal 19. And so it can be expressed as in scientific notation, either as negative 1.9 times 10 to the negative one, or just negative 0 0.19 meters per second. Now, bear in mind, this negative is telling us that this direction for the velocity is going south. And so the preferred method right over here is decimal 19 meters per, uh, per second south. And so you're expressing your direction, you're expressing your units, as well as the decimal here. And so just to recap, personally, I find it easier to, to use this um, when calculating what is your displacement, is just to add the two, uh, the two vectors or the two displacements. So uh, bearing in mind, is it positive or negative? And then just adding them together. So if it's south, in this case it was, it's negative. Here it's 1200, it's north, it's positive add them together, you get your negative 300. Um, and then you can just directly plug that into this formula here where it's the change in displacement is just adding those two displacements up. And then you're ultimately going to get that change in displacement. You're going to say, what was the final, what was the initial? And so um, instead of having to calculate it out based on drawing it, you wouldn't even have to draw this picture here uh, to figure out what, what is the negative 300, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You would just add these two together keeping in mind the positives and negatives, and then plugging that directly into your formula. All right, good luck and have fun.